So now I want to talk about swarm control. Now, why do colonies swarm? It's really just part of their natural reproduction. So there's a huge incentive for every colony to swarm every year. But as beekeepers, of course, if a colony had swarmed, we may, the bees that are left probably won't get click, click much of a honey crop or anything afterwards. So as beekeepers, we have to try and prevent it while the bees are always still going to want to do it. Now, as far as timing, of course, bees swarm in the spring, but it's usually much better defined than that. And it depends on where you are. It'll, that incentive to swarm will only be probably for about three weeks. Um, they won't want to swarm before that. If you can get through those three weeks, they won't want to swarm after it. And what it's about is the stimulation comes from a very light nectar flow. So if there's just a little bit of nectar here, the bees think, well, spring's going to be here and there's lots of food and we'll start to swarm. Once there's a big nectar flow, um, they think, well, what we should be doing is producing honey here rather than um, trying to make new colonies. But the complicated thing is, is actually picking the right time. And in some years, you don't get any swarming. Other years, it just seems like every colony you've got wants to swarm. The difference is probably in that early nectar flow and what it looks like. If it turns on suddenly to a strong nectar flow, they probably won't swarm if that light nectar flow hangs around, but it's really hard to predict. The other things that encourage the bees to swarm is the variety of the queen. Some varieties on sale are more likely to swarm. The crosses between, well, as you get more to the carnioli, carnioli end of breeding, those darker bees are more likely to swarm, where the pure yellow, what we call Italian bees, are less likely. The next issue is queen age, and that has a big issue. A young queen that's less than a year old is much less likely to swarm than an older queen. And the last one in there is room. If the colony gets crowded, whether it's in a small nuke box or in a big colony, as there's lots of bees there, what we assume is the bees are getting less of the queen pheromone. So they think, the, even though the queen may be young, they think it's not so good. So they'll encourage the whole colony to swarm and take off. So what can beekeepers do to try and reduce swarming? The first one is you can have a very good inspection program. You go through your hives regularly enough to pick up any that are going to swarm. You have to shake the bees off every frame to do it because the cells you're looking for may be hidden in little cracks in there. But you can completely stop colonies by swarming by doing those inspections. But it is a big labour input. And to know whether you want to do it, really you have to have an idea on how much swarming is costing you at the moment, whatever methods you're using now to reduce it. The second thing you can do to reduce the amount of swarming is queen age. Having no queens in your outfit that are more than one year old. And hopefully in the spring, if you've done ordinary queening at least, there'll be none that are more than six months old. The queen variety as we're talking about, the yellow ones are less likely to. The big one is making sure that the colonies have enough room because once they're overcrowded, they're just going to take off on you. And the last one is moving you, is, which has kind of been getting more and more common in New Zealand, and this is making nucleus colonies. So what there'd be is that people are taking a whole two or three frames of brood and bees out of the hive to make the colony weaker so that they won't swarm. The problem with that, of course, is the colonies are going to be weaker when they get to the honey flow as well. Um, so, so removing bees before the honey flow is really not a good idea if you can avoid it. If you're going to remove them during the flowering period and then paper them back on again, that's okay. But if you remove them entirely for swarming, the removal of the frames of bees and brood might be just as bad as if the colony had swarmed. So one other tool we've got for one tool we've got for reducing swarming is to make sure that the bees have enough room. And what, what we can do, of course, is we can add another box. And these ones are starting to get packed. So because we're going to run them as one box for the honey flow, we need to put on an excluder. Um, and we're putting the excluder on way before the honey flow. Um, they're not going to do anything in this box for quite a long time. But we're doing it so that a lot of the bees will move up onto these frames to stop them feeling so crowded. So we've put this extra box on so that the honey bees have more room. It's not there to collect honey because we're a long time before the honey season yet. But the excluder is to stop them moving brood in there and they'll just have a whole lot more room here so there'll be less pressure on them to want to swarm. So in summary, we can't predict whether it's going to be a good or a bad year. Um, and beekeepers need to work out 
what it's costing them to work out how much money they're willing to invest in straightening it out to ensure colonies don't swarm. With the options of doing inspections, making sure you've got young queens, the queen variety, whether, you've, whether you're just going to go to yellow queens, how much room you've got giving your bees in your hive, and the last one is removing nukes. Bearing in mind that if you don't put them back again afterwards, it may decrease your honey flow.